Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, we're going to talk a little bit further about our text view inside of our bins by talking about columns and more specifically about how getting in and creating custom columns is really going to help your overall Media Composer workflow. So in this lesson, I want to talk about how to choose different columns, how to save out those text bin views, get in and create your own custom columns, as well as I'm going to give you a couple little shortcuts about how to speed up your overall, I'm going to call it your information workflow inside of Avid Media Composer to get that information in that you need quicker and easier than you ever have before. All right. Now, as always, before we get rolling, I want to give a big shout out and a big thanks to our sponsor, Video Guys. Don't forget, if you are looking to get those Media Composer subscription licenses, Video Guys really is the source for that. I've included a couple links in the notes below as the fastest way that you can get to find the license that you need to make that purchase. Don't forget to use that coupon code of MC101 to get 5% off your Media Composer license purchase, and Video Guys will take care of you. Also, I want to remind you that if you like this tutorial, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it across social media to help me get the word out there about Media Composer, about these tutorials, and about why Media Composer is a fantastic option for you, whether you're just starting out or whether you've been editing for 30 years. And I also want to remind you that if you're looking for personal one-on-one -on -one Media Composer training, don't hesitate to send me an email at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. I tailor the licenses for you and your team's workflow. We get in everything is recorded so that you have it after the fact, so you can use it as a reference for days, weeks, and years to come. So hit me up at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com, and we can schedule your next Media Composer training session. All right, enough of our introduction now. Let's just get into Media Composer, and let's get started. All right, so as you can see, we are in Avid Media Composer. And you'll remember in the previous lesson, we talked about our different bin views. We have text view, we have frame view, and we have script view. Now, I did briefly mention that when we were in text view, we actually have a bit of an extension of the bin view inside of text view that you can actually get in and save like such. And if you were to create a different bin view for our text view, you can get in and save different columns. So in this lesson, I wanna show you how that's done, how you can create custom columns, and how you can make adjustments from within the text view bin window. All right, now, I believe I mentioned in the previous lesson that if we were to head into our settings, Command, Shift, and Equals, Control, Shift, and Equals for all my Windows friends, and you head on over to your user settings, you'll notice the bin views are located right here. We have our basic capture, custom film format, media tool, and statistics. Now, normally the way that I work is when I create a new user setting, the first thing I do is I come in, I get rid of all these because these are not bin views that I ever use. Now you'll notice that even though I've deleted them all, whatever bin view you're currently on will stay as that bin view. Now, if you know, I happen to like the basic bin view, I can always come back, do a little bit of a save as, call it basic, and of course it will reappear inside of the bin views of my settings. But I said that I don't want this bin view because it's got a little bit too much information for my standard bin view that I like to call basic or standard. So what I like to do is I like to navigate up to the fast menu and I'll come down right here to choose columns. Now you will notice in here we have a whole bunch of different options as far as what we want to have as far as columns go. Now I'm going to bring it right down here to this little divider line. Now you're going to notice that we have a whole ton more in here that I'm going to talk about in just a little bit. But for right now what I want to do is just talk about the ones that are contained here in the top portion of the bin column selection window. Now what I normally will do to get things rolling is I want to have just sort of a clean slate. So what I do is an all and none. So now I have no columns selected. And what I like to do is to get in and create a most, you know, sort of the most basic bin view that I am going to utilize. So what I do is I come down here to duration end and I choose start. And that's normally about it. Now, Depending on your workflow, you may add a couple of extra options in here. Like, for example, if you are still utilizing capture from tape, you might want to add the tape name in there. 
as well as coming back up here and adding the drive that your footage was basically consolidated, transcoded, or captured onto. Now, because I don't really care about the drive and I don't really care about my tape, I'm just going to remove both of those and I'm simply going to say OK. And now what I have is my most basic bin view. I've got the name, the start, the end, and the duration. And I do call that basic. So I'm going to call that basic. You'll now see that it is not italicized. And if I head on back to my user settings, you'll now see that the only bin view that I have here is basic. Now keep in mind, at any time if I wanted to rename this bin view, I can actually click on it right here and call it like really basic. All right. And what's going to happen now is when I head back to the top of the bin, you'll now see that that bin view is called really basic. But I'm not going to call it really basic. I'm just going to leave it as my basic bin view. And normally what I will do is I will create that basic bin view and then I will start adding on to it from there. Let me give you an example. Another very common bin view that I like to have is I'm going to come back to my choose columns option. And what I like to add in here is the source path and the source file. Now, why would I add those in there? What I'm going to do is simply say, OK, I'm going to make sure they appear over here on the right. You'll see there's the source path and the source file. Now, the reason that I do source path, fairly self-explanatory, I always like to know where the original file came from or where the original file currently lives. In this case, I didn't save them because it doesn't really matter. but Normally, I like to know where the original file, whether it's a camera master, or maybe it's a graphics file, where that file lives outside of Media Composer. So if I ever need to go back to relink and retranscode or reconsolidate, I can always find it very quickly. Now, the reason I like to have the source file name is because remember, you're going to get in here and scene A angle three take two doesn't really mean anything to me. Maybe this is going to be you know, best take actress runs away or terrible take don't use or, you know, uh, boom, uh, Mike is in the shot here. Otherwise, great. Well, that's great that I'm getting in and changing the names of the clips, but that's not going to impact the name of the original clip, which I always like to know just in case I have to go back and find something. This is a great way to stay organized so that you can have not only the name that you've assigned the clip, but the original name of the clip itself. Now, in this case, to be honest, I got in and named all these clips, but you know that when they come from camera cards, and actually, I do happen to have camera card information right here. Let me just go to my downloads folder. I'm just going to bring it over here. This is my favorite. I love the way that Blackmagic assigns names to footage. You can see here, none of these names mean anything to me, but of course, it might be beautiful sunset, beautiful sunrise, forest shot, forest at night, who knows what it might be. Those names mean something to me, but I also need to know what the original names of the footage is as well. Now, of course, because I have created this new bin view, what I want to do is to navigate up here. I'm going to do a save as I normally call this like media tool, or I'll call it actually maybe transcode details or something like that. And then again, like I said, I like to build on my text bin view columns from there. Now, with that said, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to switch back to the basic bin view. There may be situations where there is information that you would like to enter that is not necessarily already a custom column or already a column option inside a Media Composer. And that's where we're going to, that's where we're going to use the create custom column parameter. And what I'm going to do is on our uh, bar right across the top where we have our name, our start, our end, and our duration, I'm simply going to right click on any of the columns. And you'll see that I can come in and I can add a custom column. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add that custom column. And let's do this. Let's call it time of day. It doesn't really matter for the purposes of what we're doing. And I'm just going to give it a little bit more space here. Perfect. All right. And what I now have the flexibility to do is to get in and add my own custom information. For example, let's call it dawn. Let's call it dusk. Let's call it midday. Let's call it afternoon, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Now, to be honest, I don't want to be typing this every time I do it. It's not such a big deal when I only have, you know, eight, 10 clips inside of a bin. But if you've got hundreds of clips 
and you want to go through really quickly and just assign them all in our case a time of day option what you can do is hold option or alt on the keyboard and when you click on that open column you'll now see that you have access to all of the previous information that you've entered so you can easily go this one's dawn this one's dusk this one's afternoon this one's midday this one is dawn and you can see how now quickly and easily you can navigate through getting in adding in all that custom column information in our case time of day and what I'm gonna do is simply save this as and I'll just call it time of day why not we'll call it time of day very nice and keep in mind if you don't want the column to be located in this case where it currently is you can simply grab that column and move it to wherever you like so in this case if I wanted it to come before duration and after end we can position it where it needs to go to you'll see it's updated it as time of day dot one and all I need to do is to simply save over it like such say replace and we are good to go now let's talk about those other bin column options that we had when we came down to choose columns so how did all of this other information appear here well this information appeared here because I got in and I brought in a Blackmagic RAW clip that I had downloaded from the internet. Now keep in mind, with footage like Blackmagic RAW and Red RAW, there is an absolute ton of metadata information with those clips. So when you bring them into Media Composer by linking to them, Media Composer will immediately see all of this extra potential metadata, and it's going to give it to you as an option to view inside of your bin column selection. You'll see as I scroll down, there's just an absolute ton of options for you to choose from. Now, to be honest, because for me, screen real estate is at a premium, I don't normally put a ton of columns because I don't want to be constantly scrolling back and forth. So what I like to have is I like to have multiple bin views for my text view where they're pretty much only about five or six rows. This way I can switch or five or six columns. This way I can switch back and forth very easily to quickly see the information that I need to see. Now I did say that you do have the ability to get in and modify some information right here from within your bin view. And that is true. Let me give you an example. I'm just going to take this clip, drop it into a timeline. You'll notice a new sequence was created. However, for me, I normally always start my time code for my timelines at a very specific value. There's a couple ways that you can do that. The long way of doing it is to simply navigate over to your timeline window, right click, come down to your sequence report. You can enter the starting time code. You can apply it. You can cancel out and that will make the change. Or what you can do is simply navigate to this value. And in my case, I'm going to punch in 00595300. Now, this is a very fast way to do it, but I'm going to show you something that's even faster and even better shortcut that I love inside of Media Composer. And you'll notice I was punching in 0000, et cetera, et cetera. What I like to do when I'm working inside of Media Composer is I like to punch in a period, which gives me two zeros side by side. So what you can do is punch in period 5953 period and you'll see that this even though it's only saving me a few seconds over the span of days over the span of weeks over the span of years you're going to get to the point where you're just punching this information so fast so utilize that period key on the numeric pad of your keyboard to enter a double zero value and in this case i'm doing it right from within the column itself i'm just going to hit enter media composer is going to prompt me as to whether i want to change the starting time code and i'm going to say yes and boom, just like that, it's been updated and it's now ready to go. Okay, so I think that's a good place to wrap up this lesson. We've now gotten in, we've talked about our bin views. And what I want to do in the next lesson is I want to just sort of circle back around, and talk about keyboard shortcuts, because I have had a couple questions that have been asked to me about what my keyboard shortcuts are and which ones I've been using. Believe it or not, I've been using pretty much the same keyboard shortcuts for about 25 years. And I've sort of streamlined things down to really about the 12 to 15 commands that I use on a regular basis. So in the next lesson, we're going to talk about streamlining your keyboard shortcuts shortcuts to get the most out of your edit sessions. All right. 
Now, as always, as I'm wrapping things up, I want to give a big shout out to our sponsor, Video Guys. Again, don't forget, if you're looking to renew that Media Composer subscription license, don't forget to head on down to the show notes below. Click on one of those links. Use that coupon code of MC101 to get 5% off your Media Composer license purchase. And as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com or post them in the show notes below and I will get back to you as quickly as I can. And don't forget that if you like this tutorial, please don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and share it across social media to help us get the word out there about Avid Media Composer. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.